All right, so welcome back to the shipping container tiny house. Hopefully going to stick to my promise and get some uh, videos uploaded in the coming weeks. So on today's agenda, uh, I've got this. Now this is a heat recovery uh, extractor fan. Now some of you might be familiar with uh, the idea of whole house heat recovery. Basically what you're doing is you're extracting the, st all the companies call it stale because I think they're trying to make you buy their products. You extract the, the old air from in the house um, and then you bring new air in. That's pretty standard. That's just what a fan would do. That's what this fan up here is doing. Uh, there's a vent there and there's a vent in that opposite corner over there. So what that fan is doing is sucking air into the container, putting it under what you would call positive pressure. So the air that's got to go somewhere and it's pretty well sealed so it's got to go out of that vent over there. That's standard ventilation whereas what you do with um, a heat recovery vent is it heats up the air that's coming in with the air that's going out so it's got a fan in, in the actual unit itself it will suck the air uh, I'm not sure whether it sucks the air in or blows the air out but either way as the air is going out the air that's coming in passes through this pipe and then takes some of the heat from the air that's going out so it's a little bit more efficient so rather than just throwing all the heat that you've tried to produce in your well insulated house out through the vents it tries to hold a little bit uh, inside the building now they claim it's 80 percent efficient i'm very much doubting that but um either way it's better than nothing <laughs> i mean it's not the most efficient it's quite a clever design but it's definitely not the most efficient so how it works is the air that's going I'm not sure which way around it is, but the air that's going... Uh, let's get that to focus. There we go. The air that's going out, I believe, uh, goes out through these little pipes. So if you look in the side, this like little... Uh, like a honeycomb kind of pattern inside there. So the air that's going out gets pushed through there. The air that's coming in comes in through this bottom vent and you can see the pipes again and it mixes through all those pipes with a large surface area and hopefully passes some of the heat uh, across to the air that's coming in I mean like I say it's not perfect because these are actually thin plastic kind of they're quite flexible they're almost like a garden hose type pipe um, or something you'd use in the food industry or something like that in a one of those big whole house units you get a big box and it has you pipe you duct off different vents all over the house they would have uh, metal or even maybe even copper but it would definitely be metal of some sort to pass the heat across but yeah I think this is quite a neat solution this is designed for a bathroom so it's a one room solution uh, this is actually longer than I need they make a shorter version as well but I figured I may as well get the longer version and I can hide the vent away in uh, inside a cupboard or something because it just means the it's got more of a surface area to pass the heat across so I'll, I've been thinking for a while I'm not too sure where to put all this I was wanting to put it up here because this door is pretty much going to stay closed forever this one opens still I was going to put it up on that bit because on the outside of the door there it's flat rather than this whole side wall is corrugated so it's going to make it difficult to mount but what I'm starting to think now is I might put it up in this corner here opposite to the vent the original little container vent uh, and then just build a cupboard around it because it's gonna it's designed to sit flush against the wall if you sit it flush against the wall it actually doesn't look as bad as I was expecting I didn't really want this big white plastic box stuck up on the in the corner but I mean it, it looks quite smart it'll definitely do for now I mean it looks okay it's got a pull cord which I can tidy up um, but the thing is I'm gonna have that massive long pipe so it would be on some sort of bracket I'm gonna have to make stuck out here so it obviously doesn't look okay so I'm gonna try and put it in some sort of corner cupboard up in the up in the top corner there is the idea um, I'll just quickly show you inside the unit just let me uh, get the front off all right so there you can see the the rotor of the fan that sucks the air through um, obviously like I say it's designed for a bathroom it's got a pull cord it's designed for a house it takes mains electric but the um, the reason I bought this one is because it was boasting about having a it's called a, a low carbon so it's boasting about having a really efficient fan um, because it's DC it was boasting about having a DC motor and it's supposed to last longer and all these things but more importantly for me is that means hopefully I can run it straight off DC and I've already had a look in here 
And for those of you who've been watching a few of my videos, I think I've spoken about it before. I don't know how close I can get this to focus. We can try. Uh, but this is the main side of the board. The mains comes in here, and then it splits onto the um, the low voltage side of the board. And here there's a little label where it bridges across, 24 volts. So I can actually run this, get rid of the main side of it because I won't need it, and run it straight off my DC system because the nominal voltage I'm going to use is 24. So it's perfect really. I thought I was gonna I thought it was gonna be twelve and then I was gonna have to step it down, but even then it would be more efficient than using going from batteries to an inverter up to mains voltage into this and then all this does is bring it back down to the same again. So I can totally get rid of that bit and run it straight off there and then I can switch it externally or I can use the pull cord. All the pull cord does is switches between two mo two modes. It has a trickle mode where it's just a really it's actually really quiet. Uh, it just runs the fan constantly and then you pull the cord and it goes into mega overdraft mode uh, it, it turns into some sort of jet fighter uh, this is actually a really powerful fan I think it's like 20 watts it says on here uh, so it definitely moves some air if you want it to <coughs> there's a little bridge connector here as well that you can change there's two different options for the trickle I think it's 6 litres a minute or 9 litres a minute and uh, with the bridge left in place it's 6 litres but yeah pretty happy with it so far I'll have to get it installed get the panel and everything back on uh, and see how we go yeah so like I said I was planning to put it up here just to the left of the door and if I show you the outside of the container here the reason for that is the corrugations on the end of my container at least I'm not sure if it's a standard thing are actually different to the ones on the side now this diameter here is uh, 10 centimeters which is the diameter of the pipe that needs to come out from the vent if you have a look on the side it works a bit differently it's I think this is six centimeters between this flat bit and then it has like a beveled edge which I'm assuming is also six centimeters I haven't actually measured it and then another flat bit here which I mean it's 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 doable you just have to put a pipe a sleeve through but it just makes it a bit easier and possibly a bit neater if I do it up here and uh, potentially you know when I'm in the future when I'm getting more containers I'm probably going to be putting them side to side so it means that the vent wouldn't have to be moved it's, it's really hard to try and figure out these things because when you start cutting holes in the shell of the building it's a, it's a permanent thing and you've got to make do if you make a mistake. Alright so I've got my uh, I think it's 102 millimeter hole saw. It's so hard to commit to a decision. <laughs> I've spent ages just trying to figure out where the best place to cut a hole is. It just feels like such a permanent thing and I know that I'm going to do it in the wrong place. Uh, but yeah I think I just need to get on with it. I mean it's going to be a bit ridiculous because the, the pipe's going to stick out a good 30-40 centimetres and then I'm going to have to make a bracket for the white box uh, but I'm going to put this all this inside a cupboard because I think I'm going to keep the electrics on this side so it'll be like a cupboard there and a countertop, a gap and then another ceiling sort of cupboard and I'll just shift the lights along a bit. So yeah I guess I've just got to bite the bullet and do it and if it's a mistake I can uh, learn from it I'm sure. Well I'm pretty much committed to it now. Uh, I've had to come back the next day because my uh, drill ran out of battery unfortunately. I'm not actually sure whether it's powerful enough to get through here but we can uh, give it a go. It's definitely it's definitely got most of the way and then all this is where I've sealed the little pilot hole so no water got in. Um, but yeah let's see if we can get it finished off. Well it would seem I can't get through it with my uh, battery powered drill. Uh, it's not too much of a surprise I suppose. I'm going to have to come back with something a bit more heavy duty I think. Right this looks like it will do the job. All right, we're through. Just need to tidy up the hole a bit, obviously finish off, uh, move this wool out of the way. It was packed tighter than this, I've already pulled some out uh, and get rid of these sharp edges and clean it up a bit, but yeah, we're through. I actually think it was more, I bought a new uh, bit uh, rather than the drill to be honest, uh, because the other one, uh, I've sort of ruined it I think by drilling too fast, I read later, because I've not used a hole saw before to be honest. Um, you need to drill nice and slow and keep the drill bit cool and I think I ruined the other one by trying to drill too fast so yeah got through pretty pretty easy in the end actually not too bad right now we need to go through the inside as well so that's what the piece I've cut out of the uh, vent looks like pretty thick uh, not too sure how thick this wall is three mil four mil something like that so I've drilled a uh, another pilot hole through here unfortunately this lines up with this beam here but I happen to know I think this connects to another vertical beam here so it's kind of redundant actually uh, so yeah I've drilled a second pilot hole and I'm going to come from the inside it's very slightly higher 
than the uh, the center point of this hole. So hopefully the pipe has got a very slight angle downwards and outwards. So if there's any condensation in the pipe, it'll drip outwards and not inwards. And now we're through on the inside as well. So we've got a nice hole all the way through to run the pipe through. So I've pulled the uh, top two panels, I suppose you could call them out. Um, so it's quite interesting to have a look at the uh, insulation that's been behind here this whole time. Uh, it seems to be absolutely fine. It's not it's not damp or anything. It's not all slumped down either. Uh, it's still still in good condition. I was actually surprised the panel that's behind this bit. I actually pulled it out through that hole. Uh, I was expecting the whole thing to rip, but it actually um, stayed together. Where is it? It's here stayed together in one piece the whole thing so I can actually put it straight back in I thought I was gonna have to use some of the spare so that's a nice bonus so I'll do my best to show you what I'm doing here um, obviously it looks a bit ridiculous like I say uh, but this is going to be inside a cupboard and this cupboard is going to be the um, extractor fan for the uh, stove which is probably going to go in this corner uh, so yeah it will get a little bit tidier eventually uh, but yeah, so what I've kind of made a bit of a bodge mount here, just use two right angle brackets and put this here just to hold the box in place because I don't want the um, this uh, duct to be holding the weight of the, the fan box. It's not really heavy but that's just not a good way to uh, attach it. Uh, I actually want some more brackets, this is just kind of temporary, I'm going to do it a little bit neater. Um, so I've just put a screw up through here for now just while I silicon the outside. But yeah, the, the box is, the way it's been held now, as you can see this bit's just sort of floating. Uh, it's not got any weight on it. If I come around to the outside you can see the actual uh, duct itself. Uh, so look. So yeah the air in is that bit at the bottom, air out is that bit at the top and you can see the heat exchanges inside. So all I've got to do is silicon around the outside and seal it and I think we should be good. Alright there, all sealed. It's a bit messy. I might go over it again uh, once this lot has dried. Uh, but yeah, really happy with that. It looks pretty smart on the front. It doesn't stick out too much. Obviously it sticks out a lot on the inside, but that's just because of the heat recovery stuff. Uh, so yeah, pretty happy all around there. Uh, next job I guess is wait for that to dry, get the insulation back in there, put the boards back on and uh, build a cupboard around it. But yeah, so there you go. That's how to uh, put a vent in the end of your container and not suffocate. Alright, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if you're interested and want to see the rest of my videos. And see you in the next one.